I'm about to save your life. My name is Greg, you're watching How to Play Paintball. So before we get into it, thank you to attorney Kevin Sullivan for sponsoring this video. Uh, if you need a personal injury uh, or accident attorney, uh, he is a part of the paintball community, supports teams like Tempe Damage, uh, Tiki's Totem, I think even the Tiki's Field in general. So thank you to, uh, to Kevin for that. If you go over to lawkevin.com, you'll be able to get any other information or if he can't help you, he has a team that is able to help you out as well. All right, sometimes things go bad on the field and I wanted to give you some tips as to how to best deal with those types of situations. First things first, know how to clean your equipment. This is something that will help with a lot of issues. Uh, if you already have clean equipment with fresh batteries and you already know when it is that you need to change batteries, even just simple things on how to change the lens in your, your mask and clean it all out, uh, you're gonna be able to have a longer uh, uh, lifespan for your equipment, but also it's gonna be a lot lower of a chance that it's gonna be going down on you. So just know how to properly take care of that equipment and it's gonna take care of you. Second is gonna be tying into that one. Know how to fix it. <laughs> this is something that, especially if you're a sponsored player, you should know how to fix your equipment. This is something that should not be, oh, well, the tech helps me with this. No, no, no. If, if you are a sponsored player by a marker company or by you know some other uh, equipment manufacturer, you should know how to, to the best of your ability, and I'm not saying you need to know how to solder things and, and all of that, although if you can do that, great, but simple uh, fixes and understanding how to adjust certain things in your marker, your loader, your mask, whatever it might be, any of your equipment is vital. And this is something that I guess it's kind of a pet peeve of mine. For the most part, if something happens, I'm gonna have a rough idea of, okay, it should be this or this that's gonna need to get fixed, or even just understanding it's probably, you know, this O-ring, this O-ring, or this O-ring, and I can kind of go from there and adjust it. Same thing with my, my mask. I know how to take it apart. I know how to clean it. I know how to uh, uh, fix if there's something going on. These are all things that you are able to, uh, do on your own and not have to ship your stuff out. There are gonna be times that happens, yes, and it's terrible, but that's just the way that it is sometimes. Most of the time though, going back to uh, uh, thinking about tip one, if you are just taking care of it, then you don't have to really worry about that. It's not gonna be something that things are gonna break down um, as easily because you are already taking care of it. All right, number three. So the third thing that's gonna help you out is understanding the weather conditions. Do I have a rain lid or something that I can use as a rain lid? Do I have a visor or something I can use as a visor? So like the die one here uh, is able to fit the i4, i5, and a lot of other goggles. So it has the uh, little fingers that go in, um, uh, even having tape in your equipment to tape up ports or uh, the, the vents or whatever in your mask to keep water out, um, or I'm sorry, the, the porting as well on your barrel, uh, anything like that, being able to have those things ready and seeing already, okay, well, it looks like it might be kind of rainy at this tournament. What's the equipment I need to have in my bag? Now you're able to remedy a lot of those issues that might come up if you didn't have them. I'd rather be safe than sorry, and you guys should really be doing the same. All right. And number four is gonna be our last one. This is something that I, I just saw the other day at practice and was something that gave me the idea for this video. And that is fixing stuff on the field. Knowing how to get things working or at least understanding what do I need for my equipment to work when something goes wrong on the field. Sometimes, again, if it's raining or maybe the paint was kind of awkward and you get a jam in your loader and you can't get it unjammed or maybe there's paint that's stuck together somehow, weird stuff happens. Uh, if, if I need to, I know, okay, well, I know how to take my, my top section off for my R2 and also for my LTR for, for my, my loaders. If I can do that real quick and still be looking down the field, I can kind of do it without looking if I really needed to. Look down real quick, adjust whatever I need to, put the, lo uh, the lid back on, put that top shell back on, and I'm good to go. Or I might need to just take the loader off and know that, okay, I have about three shots uh, that I can put some paint in there and at least have something to shoot. Let's say you core sample. 
sometimes you don't have time to swab out your barrel. Taking off the front end of the barrel, making sure that, I, I know for my die ULI, I, it's regular threaded, but for something like the shaft barrel system with Planet Eclipse, it's reverse threaded. So you need to know that so that way you're not over tightening something on accident when you're, you're still trying to play. Um, I know for me personally with the ULI, that insert is not gonna come out. For something like a uh, the Freak XL, you might have to hold the insert because usually everything comes together and holds it in place. So if I still need to shoot and I just take the tip off and put it in my pocket, I might need to hold on to that to shoot so that way it doesn't shoot that part out as well and now I'm, I'm shooting erratically. But the big thing with this is something that I learned from a old school pro, I don't even know how many years ago from the Ironman. And that is, he would say if my loader went down or my gun went down, he would try to push as far up as he could on the field and then try to fix it. Greg, that's probably gonna hurt. It might, but especially with there not being coaching like there used to be in the old PSP and the NXL, you are able to maybe dive into a spot and if you can pull two or three guns to you and start fixing your stuff there, kind of poke your head out every once in a while, they might think that they have you down and you're not trying to fight. That might be a chance that your team can now move up. If you just stop playing and you are just trying to fix your stuff, not talking, not trying to uh, help your team, this is something that will automatically maybe swing a, uh, a couple guns over, which again, changes the game you're able to go and still help your team without shooting a ball. Once you get your equipment back up, then yeah, great, you're able to start shooting again. But if you are having an issue, man, just dive into the snake and crawl down or try to get further up the field. Try to make it where you can pull a couple guns and yeah, you're gonna be bait. I will go and be bait all day if it means that we win. Yeah, I might get shot a lot, but if it means that we win, that's totally worth it. So just think about that. When your gear goes down, one, make sure that you're able to look and understand how to take care of it. Um, and two, make sure that you're looking around and still trying to communicate and talk. If you have a code for that, yeah, make sure that you're telling your, your team that, yeah, my equipment's down. And the big thing is, I would say, try to get down the field and then fix your stuff. Best case scenario is you pull a couple guns, your teammates are able to move up, they can shoot those guys in the back, and you guys win the point, and now you can go back and fix your stuff. Or the other good thing would be you dive in, you get a decent spot, you get your equipment working, and now you can go to work. So thank you again to uh, lawkevin.com uh, over at Levin Law for uh, sponsoring this video. Please guys, make sure that you support those that support the channel. There's description or links in the descriptions down below. So you can go ahead and uh, click down there. Tell me what you think. What are some other tips that players would be able to use? Put it down in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. As always, remember, watch, learn, win. Thanks. Thanks.